You guys, today is the absolute best day ever. I slept in a little bit because that's what I've been doing. I woke up an hour before I have to leave for work, which is sleeping in because I used to wake up like two hours before and try and like work out or whatever in the morning. Anyway, I opened my phone and we don't have school. Like when I went to bed last night, you could just hear winds howling and apparently there's just too many downed trees, too many um, like power outages and all sorts of things. So we do not have school today. So with that being said, I'm just gonna have a self care day, no makeup, just hanging out, living my life. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to yoga. So that will be so amazing to get to go in the morning. And then after that, I think I'm gonna take a book to a coffee shop and just read for a little bit because I haven't done that in ages. And that is like one of my favorite things ever to do. morning I did yoga it was amazing there were only two of us in the class and it was just like super perfect and then I went nearby to a coffee shop which was so busy I was so shocked that it was busy like a Thursday morning but um yeah I'm curious if there's still a lot of people working from home um, but there was also a lot of people just hanging out and like it was really loud in there people were chatting and stuff like that so no idea but yeah that was crazy really cool place to be i finished my entire book there um which is or was a history of wild places this book was so good um i gave it four stars because it wasn't anything that is gonna end up on my end of the year top 10 book list like i didn't have to edit my my list or anything like that but it definitely was good and I would have read it in like one or two sittings I feel like if I wasn't so busy with work Travis Wren um he has this basically this ability to like touch things and kind of feel a connection to the situation surrounding that item so maybe like who has touched it last or where it's been used or just like stuff like that so he can kind of it's kind of like a psychic sort of a skill this woman is missing and he is basically hired by the woman's family to go find her she's been missing for quite some time the police have kind of given up um and he's kind of the last hope and that's his job he often gets called when he's kind of the last hope for people and he has found other people before or at least has given closure to people um so he goes off looking for this woman and i just want to read this one part that i marked just flipping through it i saw that i marked it um he basically has just taken off in his truck looking for her and he says but when i pull open the gas station door a tidal wave of warm stagnant air folds over me thick with the scent of motor oil and burnt corn dogs and for a moment, I feel lightheaded. My eyes flick across the store. The shelves have a vacant, apocalyptic feel. Dust molders on every surface, while a few solitary items, starchy bright white bread, Pop-Tarts, and tiny boxes of travel-sized cereal seem, set, seem almost like a movie set, props from another era. Their logos sun-bleached and outdated. At the back of the store um, sits a droning cooler lined with beer cartons of milk and energy drinks this place isn't haunted not the way i'm accustomed to it's paralyzed in time 
And I thought that was super descriptive and it brought me exactly to where this took place. Like I could just, I was just there. Um, but the other thing it reminded me of is, as I've told you before, I've lived loads of places. I've got a job in rural Illinois and I was living in Champaign, Illinois at the time, which I feel like is kind of like a mid-sized college town sort of thing. And I was debating if I wanted to commute every single day or if I wanted to move closer. And honestly, like I probably should have stayed in Champaign, but at the same time, I'm really glad that I had this experience of moving to rural Illinois because it was like nothing I had ever experienced before. And it was definitely, definitely, definitely a culture shock. But that passage really reminded me of that town because it was so stuck in time. Like I'm not even, I'm not trying to put it down or anything like that. I'm just like, when I went there, I literally felt like I had gone back in time. There's a certain way that you expect things to look. The, the roads, the stores, um, various businesses, doctor's offices, and they didn't look the way I expected there. Oh, my timer is going off, hang on. Yeah, I definitely connected to this book. And in addition, this town, um, when you went down like what you would say is like the main street, like almost everything was closed. But like not just closed, like abandoned. Like there was this one place that it just had like random books in the window. And at one time, I think I saw like a cat in there. I'm like, what the heck? Like what is in there? What used to be in there? Why is it not cleaned up? Like, why is it boarded up, but n the, the trash and the old items are still there? Um, there was a time when um, we had like one pizza restaurant downtown. That was the only thing downtown. And again, like there's, I'm used to a certain quality of pizza and this was definitely like very low quality pizza. But anyway, regardless, um, the owners were older and they got into a car accident and the store just closed, the restaurant just closed. Like the Christmas tree was still up and like everything just closed. And um, I thought for a while, like I wonder what would happen if that Christmas tree was still up next year because like, it's just like they shut and locked the doors and never came back. and. I remember because I had a dog at that time that I would walk by frequently and one time there were loads and loads of flies in the window because it's like they probably didn't get rid of the food. Food is probably just out too. Um, and the Christmas tree did stay up the entire year. So anyway, it was just eerie. And yeah, definitely reminded me of that passage of the book. But the point is, <laughs> this guy goes to search for this woman that's missing. And then all of a sudden his truck um, kind of gets close to where he feels that she is. And it is basically like this um, security guard shed sort of thing for um, this community, like a cult sort of a thing. So if you are interested in cult sort of books, uh, this would meet that need. It was really good. So there's that. I'm about to hop in the bath and read this book 24-6, The Power of Unplugging One Day a Week by Tiffany Schlein. Um, But I thought I would show you the books that are coming up in um, January that I'm going to try and read on NetGalley. I want to be more consistent with reading the books that are upcoming. And I thought that some fun challenge for me during winter break would be to make sure I get through all the January books. Not just some of them, not just here and there, but like all of the January books that I picked for myself. Okay, so here on NetGalley, I have The School for Good Mothers, which um, the person that did the Dream House blurbed about. So I feel like this could be very, very good. We'll see what it is. Midlife Bites. Okay, that one sounds a little boring. Anthem. This is an epic literary thriller set where America is right now, in which a band of unlikely heroes sets out on a quest to save one innocent life and might end up saving us all. 
Then I have the Yoga Prescription, a Chronic Illness Survival Guide. That one maybe I'll skip too. I don't have chronic illness. A Flicker in the Dark. This one is, um, I believe, about the daughter of a serial killer or something like that. Lost and Found. This one everyone is raving about apparently, so I'm really excited to read it. It's a memoir. And yeah. Manifesto by Bernadine Avaristo. I mean, I just saw her name and I'm like, okay, I'm reading it. I don't even know what it's about. Already enough. Embracing, embracing who you've been, who you are, and who you're becoming. I feel like that one could be good. And then finally, Her Hidden Genius by Marie Benedict. This woman writes like all sorts of historical fiction books about influential women. So we'll see how this one is.